Here's a few standard counting and probability examples. I've got a class of 18 people. And the way I run my classes are usually grouped into tables of four, uh, or at least some of them are four. Obviously, they're not in, all in four because it's not a multiple of four. But let's say there's one table at the, uh, let's say, the northwest corner of the room that's got four spots. And we'll, at the start, we'll number the chairs, one, two, three, four. And what I'd like to know, first question, is in how many ways can I choose uh, students for these seats at this table? And I'm saying these seats at this table to indicate that I really want to get them in order. So I really am assigning a particular student to one, particular student to two, particular student to three, particular student to four, um, and I care about what order they're in, which I don't usually actually care about when I'm assigning students to tables, but we'll get to that next. Okay. So this is the fundamental counting principle, is that we've got 18 choices for the first slot. I can't choose that student again. Okay. So this is without replacement. That's one of our fundamental questions we always want to ask. And it's with order. OK. And times 16, because then there's that's how many available for the third slot, the third chair, and then times 15. And that turns out to be 73, 4, 40. It's a lot of different ways I could do that. OK. So, but maybe I don't care um, about order without order. How would I do that? And the essential thing is that it really builds off the calculation for, the, for number one. Even if you know you want to calculate without order, the usual principle is to calculate something with order and then correct for it. Uh, the truth is that this um, is going to get, this is how many ways to get people in one, two, three, four. If I want to correct for the fact that I'm over counting, like I'm counting if Paul is here and Mary is here, I can switch them and it doesn't change anything. Or I can permute them, if this is Paul, Mary, Jack, and Sue, I can permute them in any way I want and it's going to be the same thing. So if I think of this as uh, a list of everybody whose name's in order, then what I need to do is I need to figure out how many times is each thing repeated on the list. So Paul, Mary, Jack, and Sue shows up in how many, how many ways? Well, Here's the entire list of all the ways I can do it. And Paul, Mary, Jack, and Sue can be rearranged among themselves in a calculation that's very, very similar. Okay? Given that I've got those four students, I could put any one of the four in table one, in seat one. I could put three of the remaining students, all three remaining students in seat two, the two remaining in seat three, and then there's only one choice for one. So this is the principle of overcount systematically and then correct for the overcounting and that is 3060 oh and what's the notations for these guys these have nice notations this is 18 pick four or permutations of four objects chosen out of 18 and this is denoted 18 choose four also using what's called the binomial notation which will make that connection soon. These are just notations for this quantity. Yet another notation, if you insist, let me see if I can squeeze it in here, is some people say I should write that as 18 factorial over, well, that that's everything all the way 18 down to 1. So I need to cancel out a bunch of those, namely 14 down to 1. This just gets me the top, and then I need the bottom for factorial. I don't recommend writing it this way unless you're doing some fancy stuff um, because this is an incredibly wasteful way to write this. The 18 factorial over 14 factorial really is just the product of four numbers starting at 18 going down to 15. Um, it's not really that advantageous for us at this level. Okay, so, and notice this is a much smaller number. It's still a lot of different ways to pick those or to choose those folks, but it's not nearly as big as this. So, why would I care? Well, 
in my class, people often remark on a situation where, oh, we, we're sitting at the same table again, or, or we're close to the same table. And um, sometimes there's a suspicion that maybe it's not as random as it should be. And that's a reasonable suspicion because we can calculate probabilities using what we just had. So what's the probability of seeing a particular, one particular uh, choice of table? Uh, let's say that's that specific Northwest table. I'll draw the picture again. Here's that Northwest table. And let's do it in order first. So in other words, what's the probability out of all the different ways I could pick it that I really did get, what was it, Paul, Mary, Jack, and Sue in exactly, at exactly that table in exactly that order in these seats? Well, that's one, um, just one of those possibilities. Um, it's a specific possibility out of all the possibilities we counted before. So that's equal to 1 over, what was it, 70,000 something? It was 73,440. So that is really quite unlikely. So if you see, if I pick a combination or a, a particular permutation that I want to be interested in, and then I see it, wow, that's pretty unlikely. Okay. Um, what about the probability without order, though? People usually will remark on it even if they're at the same table but not in the same seats. Okay. Well, we already did that, right? The probability that we get... Um, a particular choice of students just sitting at a particular table, um, but without paying attention to the order. So that would be the probability, say, uh, Paul, Mary, Jack, and Sue have been friends since kindergarten, and what's the probability that they will just get seated together, period? Okay, well, I want to highlight two calculations real quick. One is that we counted all of those possibilities. We said there's if I don't pay attention to the order, then there's going to be 3,060 possibilities, and it's one of those possibilities. Now, there's a very dangerous thing here. Okay, We counted this without order, and the question is, do, is it just that we don't care about the order, or can we really accurately count without the order? Okay, and the principle here, it's a basic principle, is that because this is without replacement, and I might need to do a different video about this, because it's without replacement, that means we can count without order, as long as we don't care about it. Okay, so if we don't care about it, it's not a guarantee you can count without order and do make it the right answer. An example of that is if you're doing dice rolling problems where you want to figure about like getting two and a two and you can get the same die roll twice. Turns out that then you really got to count with order anyway. So, um, but when you're doing something without replacement, and we'll explain why this works, that you can actually count without order as long as you don't care about yourself. Let me show you in this case that even if we did count it with order, we would get the same answer. And if you're worried about it, you can always count with order, and it's the safer way to do it. So what I'll do is I will count with that, with the order included. I'll say, okay, I'm going to actually pay attention to which seat everybody goes in. Now my sample space is bigger. It's all of the possibilities counted with order. But then I just want to realize, okay, um, Jack, Mary, Paul, and Sue is legal. I want to count that. Mary, Sue, Paul, and Jack is legal. I want to count all those. Well, we already figured out how many possibilities there were for those guys. There was 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. Oh, guess what? That's just 1 over the number we just got. For a few, a few minutes ago, for the number of, of uh, combinations. So that is indeed 1 over 360. Okay. So it really does work to do it in either way here. And the key is it's without replacement. And we'll talk about, if you're doing with replacement, um, why you have to make sure you count with order, even if you don't think you care about that. So, um, one more. Don't want to make this super long. This, isn't, this still isn't what usually people usually remark about in my class when, when, uh, when you're picking tables. Um, it's really this. What's the probability that the same 
students, or closer to it, is the same students are at the same table. Okay, so let me make it mm, a little bit more artificial, and let's say the same particular table. We're still going to regard one of the tables as special. We're going to say, okay, this is the good table. Yay, I love to be, maybe the door is near here so you can go to the bathroom easier or something like that. Okay. And what I'd like to know is what's the probability if one week I had one ordering of the students, one layout of the students at the various tables, what's the probability that I get the same students, not in the same order, but at that same table? Okay. This is very much like the probability of rolling doubles. Okay, so a complicated way to do it would be to say, okay, I've got two different kind of events going on here. I've got the last week's seating pattern and last week who, who was here and this week who was here. And I want to look at all the times that they match. Okay, that is like taking our diagram for like uh, dice, like a uh, rule of six and a one and a one of six, things like that. And figuring out one, two, two, three, three, that's too small. Hit. Make that bigger. It's like looking at this pattern and counting by hand one, one, two, two, three, three, four, four, five, five, six, six. But when we look at that, the probability is just one out of six. And it's the same as if you just say, okay, I'm going to pick one arbitrary choice of who was here last week. And I'm going to look at the probability that that particular choice was the same in this table this week. Now, no matter who I pick arbitrarily, I'm going to get the same probability because it doesn't matter. And so overall, this probability is just exactly the same as the previous case. So in general, the probability of doubles on anything repeated is really just the probability of any particular one event happening, one particular selection. And so that's going to be 1 over uh, 3060 again. I keep forgetting the numbers. Yeah, 1 over 3060. Now, that's still not quite right in terms of what people care about, uh, but I don't want to make the video any longer. Um, I, I picked one particular table. It's still going to be remarked upon. I'm still going to hear people remarking on it. If at any one of the tables in the room, um, some of the same students are, show up. And in fact, I'm probably going to hear it even if it's the same students who were two weeks ago or maybe even three weeks ago or if they ever were at the same table. That gets us to more complicated probability problems, which we might want to address. But that's where I want to stop now.